What's going on, smart people? Have you been wondering, are you a quantum mechanic? Well, have I got the quiz for you. Today, I found a quiz that should answer just that. I'm assuming it's an extremely rigorous quiz because you can't just make one up and put it online. That's not how it works. As always, I will leave a link in the description so that you can take it with me. But let's go ahead and get started. Let's find out how smart we are. Now, this is our lucky day because not only are we gonna find out if being a quantum mechanic is right for us, but this is also a free credited IQ test. But this doesn't just measure your average IQ or your intelligence points. This is your advanced IQ or into quantumness. Why am I explaining this? You already know this. Let's get started with the quiz. Who first described energy quanta and won the Nobel Prize in 1918 in the foundation of quantum theory? Uh, Werner Heisenberg, Max Planck, Einstein, Schrodinger, or Bill Nye the Science Guy? Well, we know it's clearly not Heisenberg. He was a dumb. Uh, here's the deal. The only one I'm certain won a Nobel Prize was Einstein for the photoelectric effect. But when I think of like the father of quantum mechanics, or at least the, the first pioneer really, I think of Max Planck. But I'm not sure if he won a Nobel Prize. I couldn't tell you that. Oh boy. 1918 too, so Einstein's general relativity was 1915, so that's a little bit of time. It could be him getting his Nobel Prize here for the photoelectric effect, which is really a quantum, quantum-y thing, right? Uh, it talks about how the energy of a photon has nothing to do with intensity. Could it be Einstein? Could this be a trick question? Let's just go for it. Einstein. Einstein. I'm gonna pick Einstein, but in my heart of hearts, I feel like it should be Planck, but I don't know if he got a Nobel Prize. The notion, I was wrong. Starting off strong, I guess. I'm already losing into quantumness points. The notion that energy is quantized in discrete packets emerged from the work of Max Planck, which helped launch quantum theory at the beginning of the 20th century. Albert Einstein described quanta of light in 1905. Okay, so it was Planck. That's nothing shocking. Another thing that led me to picking Einstein is because I thought he did coin the term quanta, but whatever. Um, what does many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics suggest? That each electron contains a tiny universe. You're my battery <laughs> that intelligent life somewhere or elsewhere in the universe is a statistical near certainty that all possibilities of quantum wave function become alternate realities or that quantum mechanics is the only is only one of many explanations about how particles behave. A and B only. What's A and B? Not that one. Intelligent life elsewhere is a statistical near certainty. It's, it's clearly C. That all possibilities of quantum wave function become alternate realities. What kind of weird ass subject is quantum mechanics where you can answer that as, oh, it's clearly that one. It's clearly that all possibilities of quantum wave function become alternate realities. It'd be, I wonder if there, ever, if there are any quantum mechanics textbooks. Most of the ones that I've gone through, because uh, I have four, are all Copenhagen interpretation, right? The collapse of the wave function. I wonder if there are quantum mechanics textbooks out there that assume many worlds to be true. That would be interesting to find out. What are the four basic forces of the universe? Easy. Love, uh, healing crystals, law of attraction, and peer pressure. That's not offered. Um, strong, weak, electromagnetic, and gravitational. Or it's obviously that one. Momentum. But what other options are, are here? Momentum, velocity, gravity, and friction. Gravitational, strong, quantum, Newtonian, weak, strong, medium, and variable. There is no force, only the dark side. The dark side of what? Of the force. That one's, well, that one's just wrong. Okay. In quantum physics, the wave function is king. It provides a mathematical description of the quantum state of a particle or a system. What can the square of the magnitude of the wave functions tell us? The probability that a particle exists at a certain place. The probability that it will decay at a certain time, uh, whether a Higgs boson is present, the mass of a particle, the probability that it is in a certain place at a given time. I don't know if I said time, but whatever. Trick question, no one knows. Um, yeah, whether a Higgs boson is present. Do you guys know what the equation is that can describe the Higgs boson? Hmm? 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 According to the Dirac equation, close, it, uh, what I was talking about is the Klein Gordon. According to the Dirac equation, given a particle, a given particle has what? Negative charge, an antiparticle, a size limit, velocity, or a silver lining. Wouldn't that make it heavy? 
If you guys got that joke, that would just make me so happy. I don't think anyone will get that joke. Uh, an antiparticle is clearly it. You got the Dirac spinner, the extra components. Uh, eponymous. I've never heard that word before. Brings together quantum mechanics and special relativity to describe the behavior of fermions, such as electrons, which are spin half uh, particles. What's more, it predicts, or spin integer, half integer spin, I should say. But off it's, okay, whatever. What was Erwin Schrodinger trying to convey with his famous cat in a box thought experiment? The concept of entanglement is akin to a cat tangled in yarn. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I'm not creative enough to come up with these kinds of possible answers. The problem he saw with taking the math of quantum mechanics literally, that sounds about right, that any object, i.e. a cat, cannot be considered alive unless it is being observed. Uh, no. A problem he saw with Einstein's idea of curved space-time, and that he was more of a dog person. Yeah, but who's not a dog person? Wrong people are, are not dog people. Uh, so let's, yeah, here we go. Schrodinger used everyday objects to demonstrate a problem with prevailing discussions of quantum mechanics at the time, blah blah blah. He used the absurdity of a cat that is both alive in a superposition of both states to show how bizarre the literal interpretation would be when applied to larger scales. Um, note if you answered E, you might also be right. What was E? Oh, there was more of a dog person. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tells us that some properties of a particle cannot be measured simultaneously with exact precision. Which ones? See, the cool thing about the uncertainty principle is that there's also the generalized uncertainty principle. Classical observables are replaced with quantum operators, the differential operators are also linear, and these operators don't always commute. A, B, minus B, A isn't always zero. And when it's not zero, that corresponds to you not being able to measure those things at the same time. And you can calculate um, the lack of precision, I guess you could say, uh, between those operators, between those observables, through the generalized uncertainty principle. Speaking of, um, I created a poll that said, what should my next drinking and deriving episode be on? There was, what was it? There was the generalized uncertainty principle, the electromagnetic field tensor, and the Euler-Lagrange equation. So go vote on that if you haven't already. But uh, that was a huge tangent. The regular uncertainty principle just p applies to position and momentum. When you take those operators and you multiply them together, AB minus BA doesn't equal zero. Cool. Peter Shore created an algorithm that demonstrated the potential superiority of quantum computers over classical computers at a certain tr trick tricky task. What task is Shor's algorithm for? Developing virtual reality simulations nearly identical to real life. That would be pretty cool. Building high-powered processing software for the Large Hadron Collider. Finding the prime factors of very large numbers. Predicting the probability of certain quantum phenomena. Or Instagram mainly. Okay. Well. Well, Instagram. Insta means instantaneously. Quantum entanglement means you know, the particles will change states without any time passing. So Instagram is clearly the correct one. Developing virtual reality simulations nearly identical to real life. I just listened to that Joe Rogan podcast with Elon Musk and they talked about AI and then simulations. If you haven't seen that, you should. That interview was amazing. I don't, I don't know if it could be that one. Building high powered processing software for the Large Hadron Collider. I'm sure that would be very tricky. All of this sounds very hard to me. Predicting the probability of certain quantum phenomena. For the most part, I feel like you can do that on paper. Or, I mean, if you have some arbitrarily disgusting potential, maybe not, but an algorithm for that? I don't think that that's necessary. Developing, I'm gonna go with A. Nearly identical to real life. Because my thought process for that is if, if it's a, if it's like virtual reality that lets you like choose your own path, then it might have to calculate all of the other paths. So, and I was wrong. Go figure. Some problems are really, really difficult. One such problem is looking at very large numbers and figuring out which two large... Oh, is the prime number one? I, I wouldn't have thought that one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. 
but a quantum computer running the algorithm devised by a mathematician could tackle the factoring problem relatively easily. That's pretty interesting. I'm actually not too, sh not too sure where we're at with quantum computing at the moment. Um, I know it's still, it's not done yet, but yeah, I, I have to read up on that. Which experimental demonstrations of quantum principles was described by Physics World as the most beautiful experiment of all time? Large Hadron Collider discovering the Higgs? I highly doubt that. Now, I'm not an experimental person, but I heard that when it comes to these experiments, the data itself, like the, the signals, the, 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 the overall experiment itself is just disgusting. Or at least the data analysis is, is, is disgusting. I don't, I don't see that being the answer. Double slit experiment? Probably. Arthur Eddington's verification of Einstein's GR during an eclipse, Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, or Mythbusters blowing up a cement truck. I miss Myth Mythbusters. Um, probably the double slit. I mean, it's it's so easy. Right? You can do that at your own house. You can have two slits and a screen and then a laser and make the interference pattern. Um, probably that one. Probably that one. Yes. Beautifully simple. Yeah, you can do that like, anywhere. Which of, uh, was, didn't Veritasium, was it Veritasium that did the thing with uh, the fingertips and looking at the spacing in between to look at interference or something like that? I don't quite remember. Which of the following technologies does not inherently rely on quantum physics principles? Lasers, LEDs, transistors, reflecting telescopes, or MRI machines? Lasers. That's actually an acronym. I wish I didn't say that because I kind of forgot what it stands for at the moment. Light. Light Amplified Stimulated Emission of Radiation, I think? Don't quote me on that. LEDs, Light Emitting Diode. Transistors, all of those are quantum stuffs. Reflecting telescopes, I mean, it depends on if you count like photons reflecting or passing through lenses as being quantum principle related. MRI machines, MRI stands for MRI, Nuclear Magnetic Resonance. <laughs> It's got to be the reflecting telescopes. Everything else is too rooted in it. Yeah. Magnetic resonance imaging, transistors. That was a joke, by the way, NMR. Um, bonus points, though, if you thought to yourself, hey, none of these options is right because everything in the universe is quantum. Yes, everything is quantum. Some things are more overly quantum-y than others. This is actually a pretty good quiz so far. I've taken other ones where it'll be like, how well do you know quantum physics? And the questions will be like, what is special relativity about? It's like, it's not about that. <laughs> what does the energy of a photon depend on? It's wavelength, it's speed, it's intensity, all of the above, or coffee. Uh, if it was coffee, we might have something to talk about. But what is it? E equals H bar F. Is it H bar or H F? Uh, so it's definitely, well, F is just the frequency, so it's got to be the wavelength. Speed. Does the energy of the photon change if it's passing through a medium? Right, because that's the only way the speed of light could change. But then again, the individual photons aren't changing their speed. They're just interacting with, you know, they're basically scattering. Uh, it's intensity. No, that's exactly what the photoelectric effect uh, disproved that the energy depends on the intensity, so it's got to be the wavelength. Amount of energy depends on the wavelength. A uh, photon with a shorter wavelength has a higher energy. What property of quantum mechanics dubbed spooky action at a distance? I've heard that so many times. It's entanglement, but let's just let's just pretend like we don't know the answer. Um, has been demonstrated with pairs of photons separated by hundreds of kilometers. Superposition, wave-particle duality, entanglement, the uncertainty principle. Uh, the quantum of solace. Um, it's entanglement. When it's with photons, I know that you can pass it through different types of crystals and entangle the photons, like spontaneous parametric down conversion. But that's just a fun fact. Entanglement. If it mentions that, that would be pretty cool. Recent transmission, no, just some specific stuff. True or false, international conference in 2017, physicists agreed upon one correct interpretation of quantum mechanics. True, false, a quantum superposition of both true and false. Um, I highly doubt that. There's no way. There's no way. I could see them being like, so we're all just going to put Copenhagen in the textbooks, right? But we can't just say that many worlds is false. 
but I don't think that they could agree on the correct one. So it's, it's false. Yeah. Okay, which of these is not an actual product? Quantum dish detergent, quantum garage door opener, quantum Eurotech toothbrush, power energy scaler, quantum bioscience ion pendant anti EMF protection reverse aging necklace. What? Or they're all actually project products. Here's the thing. I wouldn't put it past any marketing agency or whatever, whatever it is that decides on the name of a product to throw quantum in there in order to make people think that it works better or something. But power energy scalar quantum bioscience, that whole thing sounds way too complicated. I feel like that would hurt. I feel like that would be a, a terrible marketing name because that would just, it's frustrating to read. There's no way. I highly doubt that there's something called that. Okay, in before it actually is. I was wrong. It, they are all products. What? Who's, whose idea? Power energy scaler. It's just every buzzword in physics. Bioscience, ion pendant, anti-EMF. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Everything has something to do with quantum mechanics, but still that quantum salad spinner in your pantry offers no advantages. No very classical. Oh, spinner, get it? I wonder if they meant to do that. Uh, research suggests some birds may use quantum mechanics in which surprising way? By perching, well, hold on. Um, birds use the magnetic thing, right? That's a thing. Something about Earth's magnetic field, I think is how birds know what direction to go when they migrate. What is it? I don't know. Maybe they surf the magnetic field? I have no idea. By perching on power lines, they observe, absorb entangled electrons that fuel their metabolism between long flights. <laughs> Who thinks of things like that? Their eyes can see the Earth's magnetic field by maintaining quantum entanglement, thereby helping them migrate. That sounds like what I was saying, but you threw in quantum entanglement in there and now I'm doubting it. <laughs> Birds in large flocks are connected through a type of entangled consciousness that allows the entire flock to move as a single entity. I doubt that more. The frequencies of some birds' songs affect the wavelengths of light. What? Allowing their songs to be seen by mates. No. Uh, hummingbird wings flap so quickly that at any moment of flight, the wings can only be mathematically described as a superposition of both up and down. That's so clever. It's a clever question. I mean, it's cl well, I can't say clearly anything. I think... I want to say it's B, however, the quantum entanglement part is is uh, is throwing me off a little bit. I wouldn't have thought the magnetic field thing had anything to do with entanglement. But let's go ahead, let's try it out. So it was. Ongoing research in quantum biology suggests that birds make their long migrations to help. I don't know if I trust a biologist's perspective on quantum entanglement though. Unless it's a physicist who also does biology. The theory holds that birds see Earth's magnetic fields a full 20 microseconds longer than most. Interesting. Okay, cool. I got 12 out of 15, so I have 12 into quantumness points. How many did you get? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to vote in that poll.